Now, let's move on to perform static structural analysis for the bike crank. Deselect the natural frequency to exit the modal analysis. We need to define one loading condition to run a static analysis. We know that the other end of the bike crank is connected to the pedal. When the bicycle rider presses his foot on the pedals, a force is exerted on the pedal, which gets transmitted to the chain and sprocket mechanism through the bike crank. Thus, we can define a force acting on the other end of the crank. From the structural drop-down list, select force. Select the cylindrical face representing the hole. Let's specify the force in one of the global x, y, z directions. For this case, let's define a total force in the negative y direction. To access the direction components, click the drop-down arrow. Let's roughly find out the force acting on the end of the bike crank. On a safer side, consider that the weight of the bicycle rider is 90 kg. So the force exerted by the rider is mass times the gravitational acceleration, that is 90 times 9.8, which we can approximate to about 900 newtons. Now, Let's further assume that this force is equally distributed on the two pedals. So we can consider a force of 450 newtons acting on the end of one bike crank. Go to the Y component and specify a value of minus 450 newton and hit enter. The negative sign indicates that the force will be acting in the negative y direction, or downwards in this case. Press S on the keyboard to exit the tool. The bike crank is now fixed at one end and a force is applied at the other end. Note that in practical situation, the crank end which we have fixed rotates with the sprocket wheel to which is connected. However, in this exercise, we have assumed the crank end to be fixed so that it would help us to determine the maximum stresses that the crank will be subject to. We can now start the simulation. Click the solve button. In no time, you start seeing the real-time results. You can see the deformation of the crank. You will see a zero displacement where the crank is fixed at the square shape hole. Whereas, where the force is applied, we will have the maximum deformation. By default, the deformation that you see in the model is exaggerated or scaled. In many cases, the true or actual deformation is very small and difficult to visualize. If you click the deformation button again, you will see the true deformation. As you can see, this true deformation is very small which matches with the values that you see on the results legend. Hence, to better visualize the deformation in the model, the deformation is scaled. Next, if you look at the maximum deformation value in the results legend, they are reported in meters. Let's change the unit to millimeters to get a better picture of the real displacement magnitude. Click on the drop-down arrow located next to the meter unit and select millimeters as unit. Now let's check out the stresses generated in the crank. Click the three vertical dots. You can see several results options like bone miss stress, principal strain, reaction force, and so on. Let's select bone miss stress. We will now see the distribution of stresses in the bike crank. Before analyzing the stresses, Let's quickly understand what von Mises stresses are. Von Mises stress, also called as equivalent stress, is part of the maximum equivalent stress failure theory used to predict yielding in a ductile material. In simple words, von Mises stress helps to determine if the material will withstand the applied load or fail. Now, Let's analyze these stresses generated in the bike crank. 
As expected, maximum stresses are generated at the location where the body is fixed, which in this case is the square-shaped hole, in particular at the sharp corners. Click on the monitor's icon located at the top right corner. By default, three monitors are added for structural analysis, factor of safety, maximum displacement, and maximum von Mises stress. Factor of safety is the ratio of the strength of the material to the maximum stress in the component. In the physics tree, if you double-click on the aluminum alloy material, you can look at its material properties. In this formula of factor of safety, the tensile yield strength material property is referred as the strength of the material and the maximum von Mises stress is referred as the maximum stress generated in the component. When this factor of safety falls below 1, the component is considered to fail under the subjected load. As general guideline, it is recommended to keep this factor of safety above 2 to create a good design. The remaining two monitors give us the maximum displacement and the maximum von Mises stress that are generated in the model. We can quickly check the values of these results monitors as we change the geometry or simulation inputs. Next, let's go to the results arc and click the show chart button. This will show up the charts for the three monitors. The first point on the chart refers to the model analysis we performed earlier, so let's ignore them. Right-click on any chart and select Clear all previous design changes. This will clear the previous results from the chart, leaving behind only the results from the current analysis. These charts will be helpful in monitoring the parameters as we perform additional tests on modified designs for the bike crank.